Good evening, everyone. We welcome you all to Ortho TV online. This is today we have Nucoxia Digitalk series, and to introduce today's talk and speaker, I hand over to our moderator and panelist, Dr. Salim Patel, who is the chief medical advisor of Zydus. Thanks, Dr. Neeraj. Uh, very good evening to all our viewers, and welcome to this uh, Nucoxia Digitalk series in the Arthroplasty session. Uh, today we have a very interesting topic and before I talk about the topic, the speaker for the day is none other than our respectable uh, Dr. Darya Singh, sir. He's a senior joint replacement surgeon at the Zydus Group of Hospitals in Ahmedabad. He's, he has devised his own true align technique to attain the required alignment and balancing in total knee replacement surgeries. Sir has done his fellowship in arthroplasty at Germany Endo Clinic and in uh, USA as well. His specialty is made into revision arthroplasties and deformity corrections. Today, Dr. Darya Singh, sir, is with us to talk upon a very interesting topic which should be of great interest for all the orthopedicians across the world. And the topic is about a one-day TKR, a challenge accepted. So with this, I would now like to uh, ask Dr. Darya Singh to share his screen and take over the proceedings. Over to you, sir. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Dr. Salim, and thank you, Dr. Neeraj, for uh, giving me opportunity to uh, present my views on one-day knee replacement surgery. Uh, totally arthroplasty is being optimized uh, by orthopedic uh, service providers uh, in response to uh, uh, medical reforms intended to improve outcomes and reduce cost. Uh, overall, length of stay is a big driver of cost and continue to be reduced by uh, implementing improved management of perioperative and intraoperative care. Length of stay is also a uh, big indicator of overall care provided during TKA. Today, I will discuss with you how we have achieved a one-day re knee replacement program successfully uh, and components of uh, one-day knee, re knee replacement program in our center. Uh, my talk consists of My talk consists of what is one day TKR, how to achieve it, whether it is safe, whether it is effective, and in the last, what is the conclusion? So coming to what is one day TKR, one day TKR means discharging patient home after TKA within 24 hours of surgery uh, from, uh, to home from hospital after adequate recovery and meeting the dis after meeting the discharge criteria. It is aimed to, re uh, to uh, reduce possible 30 days readmission and unplanned uh, OPD visits. It's probably safer and more effective than longer stay TKAs. Coming to how to achieve it, we have been optimizing our, our uh, care plan starting from pre-operative evaluation and optimization, patient education, pain management, pre-operative planning and its proper execution to restore biomechanics, pre-operative and post-operative exercise protocol, management of blood loss, and last but not the least, proper patient selection to improve uh, our outcomes and reduce the uh, hospital stay. Coming to the pre-operative evaluation and optimization, uh, physicians, we have a team of physicians, anesthetists, physiotherapists, and orthopedic surgeon to evaluate our patient pre-operatively and optimize them to minimize the com post-operative complications and reduce this hospital stay. Specifically, regarding antihypertensives, we switch over from a ARB and AC inhibitor to another class of medicines to reduce the uh, risk of acute kidney injuries. We stop the antiplatelets five days prior to the surgery 
And in case needed, we switch over to low molecular weight heparin if needed. Regarding diabetes, uh, we uh, try to uh, control the uh, blood sugar, uh, blood sugar, and our aim of uh, last three months average blood sugar level uh, uh, that that is measured by HbA1c is eight or less than eight, and random blood sugar two hundred or less. Uh, we try to in, improve our uh, uh, patient's hemoglobin to at least eleven so that postoperative recovery can be hastened. Apart from this, we also are concerned if our patient's CRP is high or uh, pus cells in urine is more than 10 for a high power field. Our anesthetist evaluate our patient to stratif uh, stratify the risk of the patient as well as planning for anesthesia as well as post-operative pain management. The role of the physiotherapist is very crucial in reducing the hospital stay after TKA. Our physiotherapist evaluate our patient for balance, power, and coordination of the muscles. And accordingly, they plan a tailor-made physiotherapy protocol. And it is started before surgery so that any deficit can be managed. They take this opportunity to educate them also so that uh, the, uh, they understand, the patient understands the post-operative care path and uh, that reduces the anxiety and pain perception also. Our orthopedics, team of orthopedic surgeon overview all aspect of perioperative evaluations, uh, surgical planning, pain management, management of the blood loss, etc. Coming to the most crucial and important aspect of, uh, which is a, a very essential for uh, Hessian recovery is pre-operative planning and its proper execution to restore biomechanics. Restore of biome restoration of the biomechanics is essential prerequisite for faster recovery, better functional outcome, and a longer prosthetic survival. When I say restoration of biomechanics, I mean, uh, mechanical axis should be neutral post-operatively. Uh, femoral component should be implanted uh, 90 degree to femoral mechanical axis. TBL component should be implanted to 90 degree of TBL mechanical axis in frontal plane. If we talk about sagittal plane, the TBL component should be implanted five to say, seven degree posterior, posteriorly tilted and femoral component should be implanted so that uh, it restore the uh, posterior offset as well as uh, the anterior flange of the femoral uh, anterior femoral uh, flange of the femoral component should be uh, parallel either parallel to the uh, anterior femoral cortex or, or uh, make an angle of uh, up to 5 degree of flexion not more than that or less than that and if we talk about uh, rotational plan, it should be neutral, uh, it should be parallel to the um, epicondylar axis in case of femoral component, and in case of TBL component, it should align with the anterior posterior axis of the tibia, proximal tibia. Various surgeons and various centers use different techniques to achieve a desired alignment, like navigation, patient specific zigs, robotic surgery, etc. However, we at Zydus use our own technique that we call as true align technique to accurately align limb and prosthetic components. And with the help of this technique, we are able to achieve a precise alignment in more than 97.5% patients. We also studied uh, this technique, validity of this technique in 235, uh, 245 patients. And in this study, we found that our technique is reliable and reproducible. Coming to the very crucial aspect of the uh, uh, shortened hospital stay is pain management. Adequate pain management during perioperative period is very essential for faster recovery. Pain is not only a uh, unpleasant sensory and emotional experience. 
it also affects many other system. It affects control of blood pressure, it affects control of blood sugar, etc. So controlling pain during pay, post operative period is a very essential for a short and hospital stay after TKA. Uh, we intend to uh, reduce post operative pain to three or less than three on a visual analog pain score uh, by various by employing various modalities. As you know, pain is a very complex uh, uh, com complex uh, pain has very complex physiology and pain perception is still uh, uh, hardly understood. And it has many aspects. So we employ many aspects to manage it, like patient education, precise alignment and adequate ligament balancing, adequate analgesia and physical modalities. Patient education is a very helpful tool to reduce the post-operative anxiety that may lead to enhanced, uh, enhanced pain perception. So reducing the anxiety will reduce the pain perception by the patient, thus requiring lesser pain medications and lesser side effects. Similarly, precise alignment ad and adequate ligament balancing will reduce the uh, injury, soft tissue trauma, and also lead to lesser pain post-operatively, thus requiring uh, lesser pain medications and lesser side effects. We also employ adequate analgesia. We start this analysis before surgery uh, and continue through the surgery and post-operatively. Uh, Pre-operatively, we give oral analgesia. Post-operatively, uh, intraoperatively, we give adductor canal block. And post-operatively, intravenous peristamol, transdermal patches, and oral analgesics of various class. We also employ physical modality, modalities like uh, cold therapy to reduce the pain to minimal level. Another aspect of uh, shortened hospital stay is management of the blood loss. In preoperative period, we ensure that our patients has hemoglobin of 11 or more than 11. Intraoperatively, we use hypotensive anesthesia, hemodilution, adequate hemostasis, and tranexamic acid to control the loss of blood. We also uh, minimally violate the medic medullary canal because our technique is such that we do not need a uh, long medullary canal uh, for uh, cutting the distal femur. So we, we uh, minimize the violation of medullary canal, thus reducing the blood loss. We use tunicate and drain, drain however, their, their use is controversial whether they are uh, they increases or they decreases still debatable but we use a tunicate and drain and we found it very useful in our case blood loss in unilateral tki ranges from 1 to 1.5 gram per deciliter and in bilateral cases it is 2 to 3 gram per deciliter and if required we uh, use post operative blood transfusion but our transfusion rate is very very low I mean, the last aspect of how to achieve it is discharge criteria. When to discharge our patient, when our patient meet these discharge criteria, then only we discharge our patient. And aim of these discharge criteria are to ensure safety, to reduce readmission rate, and to ensure outcome and enhance patient satisfaction. These discharge criteria are based on pain, Pain must be three or less than three on visual analog scale, and it should be manageable by oral pain relievers. Vital parameters like pulse, BP, respiratory rate, oxygen saturation, temperature, urine output, they should be at the pre-operative level before discharge. Local knee examinations, there must be minimum swelling over the knee or leg. There must be no oozing from the uh, surgical site. The knee arm should be uh, at least 90 degree before discharge and patient should be able to 
leg they uh, raise their legs uh, straight before discharge other vital criteria is whether the patient are able to perform activities of daily life like getting off and getting into the bed walking with minimal assistance climbing stairs uh, able to use washroom etc so then only we discharge if patient are able to manage these activities then the patient are ready for discharge another vital criteria for discharge are changes a change or deterioration in medical comorbidities if the, these are there then we don't discharge our patient if there is underlying life threatening medical condition then also we don't discharge our patient, patients and last but not least patient should have a very strong social support at home and home should not be very far away from the hospital so in case of emergency patient should be able to reach hospital in time after achieving it the big question is whether it is safe when i launched this program when we launched this program there were many queries from our orthopedic colleagues that how you can discharge your patient within 24 hours whether it is safe uh, uh, you should ensure safety first then only you should uh, do this program so then i looked into it and uh, first of all, uh, I decided, let's say, what are the safety parameters on which we can say that this program is very safe, then how to ensure safety, and where is the evidence, and what is our experience. So 30 days readmission rate is a very good parameters on which you can rely for safety. 30 days mortality rates is another uh, parameters parameter uh, frequency of surgical or non-surgical complications requiring not requiring readmission but unplanned visit to opd so these are some of the parameters on which any program can uh, can be determined whether it is safe or not so we use we use that so coming to how to ensure safety again we emphasize pre-operative evaluation and optimize as I said earlier, and strict adherence to discharge criteria, charting of vital parameters at home. We extend our uh, hospital care to home and we follow up our patient with video calling daily. So this is this is chart which patient fills and uh, sent to us daily so that uh, we know what is happening to the patient. Coming to where are the evidences? This paper is published by Stephen et al. in Arthroplasty Today in 2018. Uh, titled, is a shortened length of stay and increased rate of discharge to home is associated with a low readmission rate and cost effectiveness after primary total knee arthroplasty. They studied 2,328 patients from 2009 to 2014. Their stay decreased from two days to 1.3 days and surprisingly readmission date rate remain unchanged and therefore they concluded that a shorter length of hospital stay and an increased rate of discharge to home was not associated with an increased rate of readmission within within 30 days and was cost effective this is another paper published in jbgs titled hospital discharge within two days following total hip or knee arthroplasty does not increase major complications and readmission rates. And they concluded that early discharge was not an independent risk factor for 30 day major complications or readmission following THA or TKA, rather increased major complications and readmissions were attributed to patient comorbidities and perioperative variables. So you have to manage them. Early discharge within the first two days postoperatively for risk stratified patients appear feasible without compromising patient care. 
coming to our experience before uh, around four months we, back we have launched this program and after that we operated 67 knees in 49 patients who have completed uh, 30 days follow-up and out of that uh, these 67 knees 31 were unilateral and 18 were bilateral and we were able to discharge 17 in unilateral group and one in bilateral group within 24 hour 10 unilateral and six bilateral in less than two days and rest more, more than two days in unilateral group patient who could not be discharged within 24 hours they were who have no social support or who have come far from the hospital so however they have met other discharge criteria uh, uh, like uh, bending like physical activity like knee examination pain etc in bilateral group we tend to keep we tend to not discharge our patient within 24 hours we tend to discharge within two days but in two days we could discharge only six bilateral cases out of 18 bilateral cases and rest of the bilateral cases again they have met the discharge criteria but they either they are uh, very far from the hospital or they were not sure of the safety and on safety parameters no readmission re within 30 days and no mortality no unplanned visit to hospital however this uh, this is a very short time and uh, very uh, very uh, small group of patients we have to follow it up for larger group of patients whether is it effective so effectiveness can be measured on pain, SL, uh, straight leg raising, knee ROM, ability to perform life activities, hemarthrosis, anemia, uh, patient reported outcomes, and survival of the prosthesis, etc. cetera. Uh, list is very exhaustive. But uh, these parameters, if they can be achieved within 24 hours, then definitely uh, the short hospital stay is very effective. Regarding effectiveness, uh, this paper was published in uh, Effort Open Reviews, and they concluded that by potentially being more effective and cheaper than and as safe as inpatient arthroplasty, daycare arthroplasty might be beneficial for patient and healthcare system. And in conclusion, short hospital stay is an achievable target without any increased risk, provided it is based upon principle of first better than faster it may be more effective and safer and it is a win-win situation for all stakeholders patients hospital and surgeons thank you very much thank you sir thank you it was a uh, very crisp and an excellent talk uh, a few questions from my end sir uh, i understand one day yes, Dr. thank you yes sir uh, I understand one day TKR is a real challenge for many surgeons, especially in our country where we know there are so many comorbidities around, patients are having issues on and off and even who are reluctant to even get operated and sometimes you have perioperative complications as well. So in that scenario, a data like that is very much commendable, sir. Now, my question to you is, sir, as you said, uh, there are certain criteria you'll follow before thinking of discharging the patient within 24 hours of surgery. So. As a routine, we have seen in many hospitals, we've been using this epidural catheter for the pain management or maybe an epidural uh, uh, pump which is kept for 24 hours. So do you all think that uh, it is good enough to keep an epidural catheter in such patients or even without that, they're very well manageable? So that is one question towards you, sir. Uh, Dr. Salim, this is very relevant question. Uh, in fact, uh, we were using epidural catheter uh, for quite a long time and now we have stopped using it because epidural basically prolongs the hospital stay when you are using continuous epidural infusion uh, there is hemodynamic instability it can also cause retention of the urine uh, uh, urine and uh, so on so uh, that's why we have stopped using uh, once we decided that we want to uh, adopt this uh, fast track recovery, then we stopped using epidural. Right, right, sir. Excellent. Secondly, sir, about the patches you have spoken. 
So, do you use opioid-based patches or just diclofenac patches? What are your no uh, opioid uh, buprenorphine? Buprenorphine, right? Sir. And how is the any side effects that you encountered? When uh, no, nausea and vomiting are very frequent side effects. Apart from that, uh, there is no uh, side effect which I have observed uh, in this group of patients. Right, right. Uh, another question, sir, regarding to the rehab protocols. Uh, since you are discharging the patient in 24 hours, and as you said, patients should do bedside sitting or even staircase climbing and walking a bit in the wards. So what are the instructions you'll give to your physiotherapist? That we so, will so, mobilize them as early as possible. So what are the protocols? In so, so that's what uh, in my talk I uh, explained that uh, role of physiotherapist is uh, very crucial. And we uh, we send we send our patient to physiotherapist before surgery, and before surgery they start uh, doing exercises. So before surgery, uh, physiotherapist uh, uh, evaluate regarding balance, power, coordination, etc. And accordingly, they make a tailor-made exercise program, and they start doing exercises before surgery. And once they understand, once they uh, start doing exercises, and then doing it postoperatively is very easy. Right, right. So that's, you, that's what uh, we follow. Right. Yeah, Neeraj, over to you. Sir, a very good technique. Actually, this must have been really a boon for people who are doing it like you in COVID situation where patient doesn't want to stay for three to four days in a hospital. And if all of us can learn this, maybe we can tell the patient and do more TKRs. So anyways, my patient still goes on the fourth or the fifth day. I don't do much TKRs. But I have a few questions. Uh, what about uh, the dressings and drain? Do you keep any drain? Yes, uh, I keep drain as I told you in my uh, presentation. I keep drain, but I remove uh, in the evening of the surgery. And uh, I found that uh, removing in the evening of surgery uh, does not increase the chance of hemarthrosis. But, uh, but, uh, but during that uh, uh, five, six hours, uh, usually uh, the blood loss is uh, uh, 100 to 150 ml. So uh, 100 and 150 ml blood that uh, these drain drains and then uh, I remove them. And uh, do you do the closure after the tourniquet release or before the tourniquet release? No, before the, uh, after the tourniquet release. Uh, sorry, but, uh, closure, first closure and then tourniquet release. Okay. And uh, you will use the tourniquet in almost all the cases? All cases, all cases. I, I uh, first I tried without uh, without tourniquet also uh, in a separate group of patients when uh, we were conventionally doing uh, uh, conventionally uh, three four days uh, stay. So in that I found that uh, the uh, blood loss is more in comparison to uh, tourniquet. But this is controversial because many surgeons say that many surgeons and many studies indicate that uh, blood loss is less than if you don't do uh, if you don't use tourniquet. But in my experience, I found that uh, without tourniquet, blood loss is more. Okay. And so when do you call them for the dressing or do you do their dressings at, well, do you send someone to do dressing at home? So first dressing uh, after uh, six to eight hours, second dressing for drain removal, second dressing uh, before going home. And then I send them home. If dressing is required, let's, let's say some oozing or something, then I, uh, I either I send someone or I call them. Otherwise, I don't uh, do dressing after that. Otherwise, I call them after seven days for uh, suture removal. I remove sutures uh, after seven days. After seven days, you remove the sutures. So do you use any special yes, yes. type of sutures or staplers only? Staplers only. Okay. And uh, uh, do you, uh, what about the patient's post-operative cooperation for physiotherapist? So you appoint the physiotherapist or the patient chooses their own physiotherapist? Yes, uh, again, uh, this is a very relevant question. Uh, most of the patient want that uh, their own physiotherapist should be there, but uh, I prefer, uh, first, I don't prefer a physiotherapist visiting the patient because uh, I teach them exercise which they're uh, supposed to do. So patients who are motivated, who can do uh, their own exercises, I, I encourage them to do their on their own. If still they want some physiotherapist, then I send my physiotherapist. Okay. Okay, I think that's all from my side. We thank you very much. In this COVID scenario, I think this learning this technique will be really boon. But I don't think if you are doing very less number of TKRs in a month, maybe three to four only, then you should be doing the day, day TKR. 
but once your volume increases i think this will be a very good technique especially and patient's fear of staying in hospital for more than one or two days will go away call them the call them today send them tomorrow yes that yes. is the challenge that, everyone that, that, of us, everyone of us have to accept it one day or the other yes that's what nirz i told uh, dr nirz i told uh, in my presentation that first better than faster yes that's perfect Always. perfect thank you sir thank you very much we that's my pleasure sir we, yeah we thank everyone for uh, being with us week after week this is the longest running series on uh, at on saturday 9 pm since the lockdown happened since april you all, all the viewers are with us on saturday 9 pm joining us week after week and giving and uh, seeing these videos and these videos have a very high rewatch value so when you want to do a tkr you can come back and see us again thank you everyone and good night thank you sir thank you good night thank you thank you, thank you.